And Booby. Alright, uh, I don't know, you guys should be able to see Ghosty. He's chilling, he's sitting down. Booby is sticking her head out of the cup. There you are. Sorry, secret mug. Oh, yeah, sorry, secret mug. If you want a sorry, secret mug or a, um, a sorry, secret a Booby yeah. shirt or a trees, yeah. a trees Grow Back shirt, that's a good one. Uh, Teespring. It's it's in the link in our description on our video. Plus, it should be right below you, depending on what device you're using. Yeah. So if you want a shirt, there you are. Okay. Uh, for time of topical political commentary, you can hit us up at Middle America with Vin and Sorry. Oh, we said we were gonna open those gifts. So. So yeah, there's a couple baby shower thingamajiggies that we missed. So here we are. I think that a few. Did we get these in the mailbox today? No. Remember, I said check our mailbox. That's what I was. Um, I don't know when they came. Um, Who's that from? I'm, I'm looking. This is from... I don't know. Who's it from? Oh, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. Appreciate you, sir. Oh. <laughs> well, I wanted to call yeah. it out for... I thought you had already Baby clothes it. for the big yeah, one? Yeah, yep. So this is the little outfit and this one. This one says, handsome just like dad. Aww. <laughs> How's cute. Look, God's chill is the name of it. Like God's children. That's very interesting, huh? Very nice. Ooh, inflatable water play mat. Oh, yes. Thank you very much. Is this yeah. another thing that's going to go in the bathtub? No, this is a, this one you, you fill it and it, it you like... I don't know if you put water. I think yeah, you put water into it, and there's little toys in it, and so then the baby is on their belly, and they play on it, and it moves a little. Oh, that's around. what's up. That's what's Keeps up. Keeps them busy. We've got more baby stuff that we will be revealing on the next main stage show. Oh, we're just doing. Uh, so okay. right now we are going to Sabaton Bismarck. Everybody's been asking for it. Uh, Pony was the first one to alert us to it. We were late. We apologize, but we're back. Sabaton Bismarck. Let's do it. And if anybody's interested in getting any of the remaining items on the registry, that link is in the description. Fudge all. And, uh, and we will, we will, um, uh, what do you call that? Do the thingamajiggy. I keep saying reveal, but we'll open, we'll open yours too. Yeah. On, on camera. On camera. Unless and, you tell us not to. Hold on, wait, wait one second, because you had this in private and it needs to be public. Oh, good. Very really good. All right, let's go. Okay, go. So, did you find the boat? This is cool. Mm
that's deep. Wow. That's good. Wow. That's good. Because I know there's going to be people saying, why are you... This was a German... This was a German war machine, the Bismarck. Uh-huh. Um, I usually don't look stuff up, but because it's it's history, I want to make sure that we're we're accurate and respectful. But basically, <laughs> you you had to put that in there because it's talking about a German war machine in World War II, uh-huh. which obviously it was flying under the Nazi flag. Yeah, and there is actually a clip of the Nazi flag, but then the smoke came and and like you know distorted the vision. But you had, they have to say war knows no nation. The video is dedicated to those who fought to the bitter end in the Battle of the Atlantic. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm pretty sure that at the end it showed a German sailor getting helped up by an, an allied sailor. Yeah, that's what it looked like to me. So, and, and it's really, unless, unless you're, it, it's hard for people to understand, but there is a certain type of camaraderie that you feel, with, even if people, even with people that you're trying to kill. Mm. It's, hard, it's very, very hard to explain. I mean, it depends on the type of war. Like, so, like... If you're both fighting for your homeland, you know, yeah, you're mortal enemies and stuff, but at the same time, there's a sort of camaraderie that you have because you're doing something that nobody in your country can relate to, and they're doing something that nobody in their country can relate to, and the only right. people that can relate to you are the people, yeah, strangely yeah, enough, for you're sure. trying to kill. So, um, mm-hmm. I think that, you know, it's kind of like the Rammstein video with Deutschland where you're, where you know, they're going through Rammstein's history and apparently they got a lot of pushback for that video because, you know, it's, it, you know, there's Nazi, mm-hmm. Nazi, yeah, but it's like, thing. what can you do? It's part of history. Yeah. Like, you, see, this, I think this is a difference with me where it's like, I'm not a fan of monuments. Like, I'm not a fan of the Robert E. Lee monuments. Like, mm-hmm. that's, that's ridiculous to me. Um, you don't see monuments of Hitler and out right. in the center square no. of Germany. But I'm also not a fan of historical erasure either. And I don't think that you need, you know, you need a monument to recount history. There's other ways of recounting history. You have museums, you have things like this. I don't see this as a celebration of all the evil shit that Germany did. Mm -hmm. This is about war and what you do in war and the prices that people have to pay in war and the deaths that happen and the tragedy of warfare itself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at the end of the day, war knows no nation in the sense that, you know, every nation, you know, you're gonna fight, you're gonna fight. And there's not one particular nation that goes to war and the other ones don't. Mm -hmm. We all do it. And at the end of the day, the rules of combat, the rules of engagement, you know, I mean, since the Geneva Convention have been different, but the things that everybody goes through are not specific to that nation. So, um, I think it was it was kind of risky for them to do that. Uh, yeah, I think it was extremely risky. Yeah, and, and again, I don't want to I don't want to trivial- I didn't understand like I didn't know, you know, about this. What did you say the the battle in the Atlantic or something? Yeah, it's the battle of the Atlantic. Yeah, I I I'm unfamiliar with that. So to me it was just uh, the Bismarck was the first of two Bismarck class battleships built for Nazi Germany's Kriegsmarine. Kriegsmarine, I'm, I'm assuming, is water warfare. Mm-hmm. Named after Chancellor Otto von Bismarck, the ship was laid down at the Baum and Voss shipyard in Hamburg in July 1936 and launched in February 1939. Uh, in the course of the warship's eight month career, under its sole commanding officer, Captain Ernst Lindemann, Bismarck conducted only one offensive operation lasting eight days in May 1941, codenamed Rihunbung. The ship, along with the heavy cruiser Prince Eugene, was to break into the Atlantic Ocean. And then, long story short, um, the Allies came down. And in the ensuing battle, Hood was destroyed by the combined fire of the Bismarck and the Prince Eugene, who then damaged the Prince of Wales and forced her retreat. Bismarck suffered sufficient damage from three hits to force an end to the raiding mission. The destruction of the Hood spurred a relentless pursuit by the Royal Navy and involving dozens of warships. Two days later, heading for occupied France to effect repairs, Bismarck was attacked by 16 obsolescent ferry swordfish biplane torpedo bombers from the aircraft carrier HMS Art Royal. 
One scored a hit that rendered the battleship steering gear inoperable. In her final battle the following morning, the already crippled Bismarck was severely damaged during a sustained engagement with the two British battleships and heavy cruisers was scuttled by her crew and sank with heavy loss of life. Wow. Most experts agree that the battle damage would have caused her to sink eventually. The wreck was located in June 1989 by Robert Ballard and has since been sur further surveyed by several other expeditions. So, um, you know, severe loss of life. A lot of people died and basically, um, it says here, the mood of the crew became increasingly depressed, especially as messages from the Naval Command reached the ship. Intended to boost morale, the message only highlighted the desperate situation in which the crew found itself. So, I mean, that's a pretty, see right here, the, HA, the HMS Dorkshire picking up survivors. Wow. Let's make sure to put that picture in there. So the Allied folks picked up survivors, so that was true. People. You know, they did. the good yeah. guys did, and you know, inshallah, that those guys didn't get tortured or whatever. But I mean, so I mean, it, yeah, it's about a Nazi warship, yeah. But again, as I said in the Rammstein video, uh, that would be hard for me, like, to save somebody out of the water and then begin to torture them. Right, right. I, I, I don't think they did. Um, out of a crew though of, of two thousand two hundred men, only one hundred and fourteen survived. Yikes. Um, it's pretty. <coughs> there must be some pretty major survivor's guilt there. Yeah. And 400 of them were in the water. But only 112 got out of the water? Right. Only 114 survived. So it's it's very hard to survive in, in open water like that. Especially after. Why? Because it's so cold? Yeah. Yeah. Some survivors reported that they saw Captain Lindemann standing at attention at the stern as a. Sh of the ship as she sank. Yeah. What? I mean, you always hear those legends, you know? I mean, and it's probably true because, you know, these guys, you know, their code of honor was, was pretty mm -hmm. crazy. Going on with the ship. Yeah. Um, yeah, the HMS Dorkshire was a heavy cruiser of the county class of the Royal Navy. So I just wanted to make sure that, that they were actually rescued by mm -hmm. the Allies. So they were. Those 112 people were rescued by the Allies, and hopefully they were treated well. But, I mean, look, uh, as I said in the, in the Deutschland video, the German people at the time were not monolithic. They were not all Jew-hating, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. You have to understand the historical context. They were, you know, at the, the Treaty of Versailles was an unfair treaty. It, it went overboard and it was basically the word world punishing and humiliating Germany and the Germans were in a terrible situation. So a lot of the fighting was to, to restore their homeland mm -hmm. and to restore their national pride and dignity. Mm -hmm. And so you, you got to hold, to some degree, you got to hold the world responsible for being so crazy. Um, at the Treaty of Versailles because that that contributed to uh, the angst that, that created the, the negative parts of, of what happened in Germany. And I'm not letting anybody off the hook. I think Hitler is an evil bastard. I think I think Mengele and all those guys were evil bastards. They were singularly terrible people. But what happens when you have a whole mass of people that, that are given a raw deal on a national level, it only takes a select group of sociopaths mm -hmm. to lead them in yeah. the wrong direction. Yep. Those are the facts, and we see it today. And I'm not, you know, call it what you will, yeah. but it, it's 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 kind of a similar thing where, you know, the folks, you know, the people were saying um, everybody who voted for Trump was a racist. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, you had a lot of people in middle America who were, completely destitute and you got a guy saying I know how to solve this problem right, right and exactly. you know whether or not you know Trump is a sociopath remains to be seen but my, my point is is that I appreciate them taking the risk of doing a song about that and understanding that war is war period mm -hmm. and at the end of the day those particular soldiers you know were were fighting for each other and died pretty terrible deaths and it's a it's a human interest tragedy, period. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why you know the the Dorkshire, Dorsetshire. Um, I think it's a good thing that they rescued those guys. You know, like we're we're way too quick to write off whole groups of millions of people. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and, and I get it, the, ideo the ideology is horrible, it's terrible. Um, but at the end of the day, I can see why you would want to have that national pride. You know, it's this pride of a nation and mm -hmm. beast made of steel. And you got to give it to the Germans. They were so advanced. They were doing things that nobody else is doing, and they they were create they were yeah. they were engaging in tactics that nobody else is doing, mm -hmm. which to this day is still being studied at West Point as well as other you know auspicious you know mm -hmm. military and paramilitary outfits in America, the Alphabet Group. So. <laughs> You, you, you gotta take it that way, and I appreciate these guys. But the other thing for me is I think Germany has done a very, very good job of disavowing I us. agree. That's I was thinking about that, yeah. You know? And yeah. so it, it, it makes it a lot, it's like they've already, they beat themselves up about it so yep. much that we don't need to do that. Yeah. Like they took, they, they took accountability for themselves. It's a lesson that America could learn, mm -hmm. you know? Um, your average German is not gonna defend the, the a swastika and say that's our national heritage, yeah, but exactly. there are a lot of Americans who will defend racist flags and say it's their national heritage. Mm -hmm. I know, and it's bad. Yeah. Uh, but the Germans have, I thought, I think have done a very, very good job, and, and you know, they've probably overcorrected to the point where you can't even say you're proud of Germany. Mm -hmm. And I think the Germans have a lot to be proud of. They've, they've mm -hmm. contributed a lot to the world, so. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, I like this one. I like that it was, it was very empowering. Um, yes. You know, it made you feel like, I don't know, if you were in that, on that side and this, you know what I mean? Like that, it was just, I don't know, just the way that they came across with it. And then that guy on the front, the one that was like, he kept yeah. doing like this. I was like, well, like that would be Vin if he was up there. Well, <laughs> I, I said he looks like Chuck Liddell and I'm going to show you what Chuck Liddell looks like. Okay. Because this dude looks all, it, it's almost as if, <laughs> doesn't he look like Chuck Liddell? Yes, he does. It's exactly like Chuck Liddell. <laughs> Like, yeah, he does. Hopefully, we can get like a side by side picture of that. But I mean, he, I, I loved it. He was into the music and he's into the tragedy. And, and I, I hope that like we can all evolve in our thinking and look at everybody as a human being, no matter what side they fight for, and be like, mm -hmm. okay, this particular battle. It's a tragedy that, you yeah. know, over 2,000 people lost their lives and you only had 112 people survive out of it. Like, that's a tragedy. Yeah. And if the captain really did go down with the ship, like, at attention and all yeah. that, you've got to give it to oh, him. That's, yeah. Yeah. that's bravery and honor and, and that type of chivalry, which, you know, to the modern mind doesn't make sense. Like, why would you do that? Right. Um, so, so, you know... This was a really, really, really good song. But these guys are, are the other Sabaton song we did too was pretty, pretty up there. These guys are like mega talented. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you remember when Dorian used to be obsessed with the the Titanic? Yes. Yeah. So I'm gonna like kind of ship this off to him and see because he, he knows Dorian knows every little detail about so much about the it. Titan yeah. Even the conspiracy theories and stuff. Yeah. But, and, it, and also, shout out to the British military because the, the the ships that took down this ship were vastly inferior, and basically they took uh, they took out the SS Hood, and the, the Royal Navy was like, "Screw that, we're coming for you guys." I mean that that shows a lot of that's a lot of gangster. Yeah. When I was watching it, I was like, it's so wild, like, what what war and battle is, because yeah. when they're when they're doing it, like, and, like, one of the times, like, they made a shot, and the guy was like, ah, he was, like, glad about it, you know what I mean? But you're at war with these people, so of course you're going to be glad at, right. about it. Yeah. But then at the same time, like, you have to deal with the thought of, like, you killed people, like, there was people on there, yeah. and the, the, those people, you know, had the same drive to to win as you did and I don't know it's it's just it's kind of messed up you know what I mean just, well, just it, what war is yeah it's sad everybody lost to honey at home I know you know like, yeah there was uh, there's this movie we were soldiers and it, it's based on a book and it's actually based on a true story but what was cool about it was that the you know I the typical tell my wife I love her and then the the, yeah. the, the, the wife is at home and she's hearing the knock on the door the, the typical thing that you see but what they did too was they had a Viet Cong because it was Vietnam they had a Viet Cong soldier and he was dying and he was talking to his and you, right, you couldn't exactly. really hear what he was saying and then it, it goes to the next clip of the Vietnamese and it's like whoa okay that, that and that's what it means when it says war has no nation it's like mm -hmm. 
this is what happens. Like, people die, yeah. and, and everybody's losing someone. Like, you're not fighting. This is not like, it's like Gears of War, you know, where you're fighting these horrible aliens who are not connected to anything. Mm -hmm. They're just bad guys who are, no, like, you're fighting other human beings who are exactly like you. Right. Who right. Missed, a, missed a child's birth. And you know, missed an anniversary and all this, and yeah. and and now you know, told his wife, "I'll see you soon," and yep. is not going to see her. Like, so, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's a it's a tragedy all around. And then you you see cowardice on both sides, and you see virtue on both sides. Mm -hmm. You know, and you see, um, you see the best and the worst of humanity in war. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Yeah, crazy, crazy. I, I just think that these guys, these guys, like their their shtick is like the historical stuff, right? Like we go into metal, and I guess like their fan base had been asking them over and over again to do to a song. Sense. Yeah, they did such a good job. They did, they did a really, really, really good job. I liked what I saw visually too, and it was good. Yeah, and these guys are from Sweden. Um, but yeah, they, they, they did, I feel like they did Germany pretty proud here. And um, I really, really appreciate it. Uh, it's a 10 for me. Oh yeah, me too. It's a me 10 too. for me. Yep. Good song, good song. Shout out to Sabaton, shout out to Pony. And uh, thank you guys again for the uh, the, bir the the birthday. Well, kind of birthday. The uh, birthday gifts for the boy. And uh, we'll be opening more on the next main stage song. Vin out. Sorry out. Gone.